Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video today. Um, today we're going to be looking at the USMNT team uh, roster for the friendly against Switzerland on May 30th. It's going to be at 2 o'clock Eastern time, 11 o'clock my time, so I hope everybody gets to tune in. Um, from what I understand, it's going to be on ESPN, Unimas, and maybe another channel? I forget which one. But, um, so anyway, today we're going to be looking at the roster, getting my reactions, and um, I guess let's dive right in. Fun fact, this game is actually in the same city that Jurgen Klinsmann's son played professionally in Switzerland for about a year at. So, there's that. <laughs> so, a goalkeeper is, looks like we're taking three to this friendly. Um, right off the bat, the, one of the bigger surprises to me was taking Chituro Odunze. Um, although he does train with uh, the Premier League team, Leicester City, um, you know, he obviously doesn't play. But he trains with the team, so I am happy to see him in. Happy to see him get some experience. Um, another player we brought in was David Ochoa, who was at times has been absolutely fantastic to watch in the U20s. Um, I don't know if you I don't know if you remember his uh, his performance in the World Cup a few years back for the U20s. Uh, it, it was he was he was outstanding some games. And the guy that I fully expect to start, uh, Ethan Horvath. Um, you know, we all know his, he struggled quite a bit in, in, for playing time in Belgium, not necessarily to all his fault. Um, I'm glad to see him on the roster, and I really hope he gets to uh, start. And of all our goalkeepers in the pool, I actually think he has the highest upside. I know not a lot of people are going to agree with that, but I rate him ahead of Matt Turner right now, and I actually think... Given the right situation, he's better than Zach Steffen. But that's just my opinion. Um, we're all fans here. I hope the best player starts. But um, I know there's also been a lot of talk about him uh, transferring, maybe even back to the MLS. Um, I personally would rather see him stay in Europe, um, even if it's uh, playing for a championship team in England or or possibly playing for uh, another league, maybe a, a mid-team in France, mid-team in Germany. I, it doesn't matter to me. I just wanted to stay in Europe, and I wanted to keep playing. Um, now, again, MLS isn't the worst option. I mean, we've seen others do it, you know, that failed in Europe. Uh, you know, look at um, Zach Steffen. You know, he, he uh, had to come back from Germany, uh, made a name for himself in Columbus, and then worked his way right back over there, which, by the way, I fully expect him to go somewhere possibly else next year too but that's for another video so of the goalkeepers I think we brought in two two very young um, young keepers that I think is gonna be really good to get some experience for them and I think Horvath will probably play the entire game unless of course we're for whatever reason of a crap ton of goals or down a crap ton of goals then why not bring one of the kids in so next we'll look at the forwards um, this might be just looking at the names on this list gets me really excited because we're obviously Polisic um, is going to be playing in the Champions League, so he's not on this roster. Um, so this alone, without Polisic, is enough to make me really, really smile. Um, so we got Brendan Aronson, who I, I mean, in a normal year, I would say he's probably skyrocketed his stock more than anybody, but. The next guy we'll talk about may have actually done beat him on that category, but I love his playmaking ability. Um, he is just a baller. Um, anytime he has the ball, he's a threat, uh, even if it's not scoring goals. He is a complete wizard with the ball, and I hope he gets to play quite a bit. Uh, the next guy, Daryl DK. I think he may be our... Uh, I don't know if I would say most improved, but I think he, he is the, the guy who went uh, from down here to just local MLS guys knowing about him, maybe Orlando City fans. I mean, he was playing for University of Virginia just a few years back, and now he's all the way up here in a possible Premier League team who he plays for, Barnsley, uh, if they win the next, you know, if they somehow can pull out, you know, the... The next game um, is potential they could be going to fighting to go to the Premier League. And uh, I already know if you look at the comments, it seems like the team would like to keep him. 
Uh, I'm sure there's some other teams that would want to keep him too or uh, bid for him. We'll see what happens to him. Really hope he doesn't go back to Orlando City, but he might. Um, I know he his loan was extended there for the playoffs at Barnsley, so hopefully we can keep him over there. Um, Matthew Hoppy makes the makes the roster. Um, he kind of came out of nowhere this past year too, and that uh, I believe he scored a brace there for um, Sh Shalk. Uh, what was it earlier this year, maybe? Um, so he came on a lot of radars then. Um, He's an interesting one. I think he's the wild card out of everybody. Um, I don't expect him to be on the team in the Nations League or anything. I think he's going to get cut after the game. But uh, I would like to see him play, and uh, I would like to see what he's got, especially with um, the support we can put around him in this game. Uh, Gio Reyna, uh obviously, he's going to make the team. He's, he's growing to the point where he might possibly be the most important player on this team. That's the amount of talent this guy has. Um, then we'll head into Tim Weah, who I think has been criminally underrated the past couple of years. Um, I know injuries have really took a toll on people's rating him, and um, but I hope he really reminds a lot of people who he is. Um, he's electric. If you remember his time in um, PSG, he did not look out of place. Uh, he tore it up at Celtic. Um, really looking forward to seeing him play. Then we'll get into Josh Sargent. Um, it's possible that he could be also fighting for the uh, Bremen for the uh, relegation spot. We'll see what happens to him. I think he's an interesting guy with his club career moving forward. Uh, I don't expect him just to stay at Bremen. Uh, he might get, he might stay in Germany. Who knows where he's gonna go? Um, a lot of people kind of nag on him for not scoring goals, but that team, that that team is not made for scoring goals. And if you know soccer, you know that. So it'd be interesting to see what he does with another team, especially with this team, with the support he'll have around him. And then a guy that I'm really, really high on. I know he's a little bit older than a lot of these guys we're talking about. But Jordan Sibichu, uh, you could pronounce that another way depending on where you're from, but he has absolutely been vital in Switzerland for the young boys. Um, he's not their leading scorer, I don't think. I think he's probably their second leading scorer, but I also think, oddly enough, he may be the third highest scorer in the league despite the fact not being the leading scorer on his team. Um, I could have that wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. <laughs> But uh, I really hope he gets to play, gets a lot of minutes. I would love to see him get 45. Um, so moving on to the midfielders, this is where my main gripes are. Uh, Kellen Acosta. Why? Why is he on this roster? Uh, that needs to be Luca De La Torre. And uh, if you can make an argument for that, or I should say against Luca over uh, Kellen, um, by all means, comment and let me know, because I'd love to see it. <laughs> but uh, I don't think Acosta needs to be on here. I don't think he's a National League team player. Uh, not, not, not that he's not a team player, I just don't think he's of quality to be on the national uh, national level. Um, I don't think he should be on there for friendlies either. Uh, Tyler Adams is an interesting choice because I don't really know how fit he is, and um, because he's been nursing an injury. Um, so that could be interesting to see if he actually plays. Uh, in my opinion, he shouldn't, just because we're going to need him for the uh, the Nations League. So Julian Green, I'm actually happy to see him back. Funny enough, Julian Green is actually, if I'm not mistaken, a year younger than Kellen Acosta, and just a couple of years older than Weston McKinney, which is crazy to think about considering way back in 2014, Julian Green was playing in the World Cup and scoring. That's how young he was when he came onto the scene. You know, Julian's obviously still playing in the Bundesliga 2. Um, he's a good player there. I, I'm glad to see him here. I don't think he should be anywhere near the starting lineup, obviously, but I don't mind uh, getting a look to see if he should be around there for depth. Uh, Sebastian Legette, um, 
I know a lot of people are indifferent on him because he does produce when he plays, but look who he produces against. Um, I don't think he should be anywhere near this team. Um, I, I guess one can make an argument for him being on the bench in a friendly for leadership purposes maybe, but I don't know how he is as a leader. Um, I know he talked a little bit about Zlatan after Zlatan left, which rubbed me the wrong way years back, but uh, Sebastian for what he's worth, I don't think he should be on here. Uh, Weston McKinney, hey, you know, say what you want about him, but he, he's obviously going to be one of our major players going forward. Yunus Musa. You know, I'm not against him playing, um, playing in the playing in the back uh, midfield um, to see what he does. I know that's not what he normally plays in uh, for Valencia, but uh, who knows if he could do it or not. I would like to see him get the get a shot at it, especially if Tyler Adams isn't going to play. I mean, what's the worst we can do? <laughs> so then we've got Jackson Ewell. Um, I know he's not everybody's cup of tea, but for MLS, I actually don't have that much of a problem with him being on the team, fighting for a backup spot. I do think he should be on the Gold Cup. Um, I don't think he's a bad option. I think he's better than guys like Leggett and Acosta, so I, I can make it more of an argument for him than I can those guys. Um, I I don't have a problem with him being on the for the friendly roster. So then let's get into the defenders, which, you know, for what it's worth, tends to be our biggest, I'm sorry, I'm pulling up the defender list right now, for whatever reason it didn't load. So here we go, we have John Brooks, I mean obviously uh, John Brooks is, is, he's the backbone of this team, um, he's not necessarily, doesn't seem like he's the vocal leader, but he's the leader of this, of this back line. Uh, Reggie Cannon, Reggie Cannon's up and down. I mean, he got off to that hot start, but then his team really, really uh, kind of, I mean, for lack of a better term, they stunk in Portugal. <laughs> uh, so I, I don't know what's going to happen with Reg, Reggie Cannon going forward. I keep hearing rumors of him possibly uh, transferring to uh, a Serie A team. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I, I'm not against Reggie Cannon. He's shown flashes that he can play. Um, I, I would like to see him actually in the Gold Cup as well, maybe playing consistently. Um, or fighting for a backup spot. Uh, another su kind of surprise is Justin Che. Um, he's going to be transferring to Bayern Munich for, for all intents and purposes that I've been hearing. Uh, young guy, glad to see him get in there and get some experience. Um, Dest, you know, Barcelona seems to be... Uh, I have no idea what they're going to be doing moving forward, but I'm glad Dest is there and I'm glad to see him playing and training against guys like uh, Messi every day. Martin McKenzie, I am really happy to see him here. I hope he plays. Um, I understand he he's probably going to be Miazga's backup. Um, I'm not against him going to Gold Cup just to get some playing consistent playing time. I'm high on him. I've met the guy. He's super nice. Seems like he's got a really good head on his shoulders. I'm a big Mark McKenzie fan here. And then, like I said, Matt Miazga. Um, I expect him to be starting uh, this game alongside John Brooks. Um, Matt's had an interesting career. He's still technically a Chelsea player, although I'm sure most of us have forgotten that because he's never actually played for them, and he loans out every single year. I would love to see him find a permanent home. Um... I don't care if it's in Belgium, I don't care if it's in the championship where he had been, uh, I just want to see him find a permanent home because I believe going back and forth has put a little bit of a hamper on him. Tim Ream, I know he's probably one of the most griped at guys for making this team, but for leadership purposes I don't mind him being on the bench as long as he doesn't play. If he plays, I'm right there with you. I've got a gripe with you too, but for a leadership on the bench, I'm all for it. I mean, the guy's technically still a Premier League player. He just started last weekend for Fulham. Whether or not that was just a, uh, you know, send-off game, maybe. 
but he technically played in the Premier League last game, so let's give him a little bit of credit. I don't know what's going to happen to him moving forward. I don't know if Fulham's going to keep him for the championship or what. So then we got Brian Reynolds. Brian Reynolds, uh, you know, he he's moved on to Roma. Um, I don't know how his future looks going forward with with Moreno. Um, we all know he likes to go with proven guys. We'll see what happens, but uh, either way, Brian Reynolds, I want to see him get some minutes too. Um, I know he's going to be fighting for playing time as well. Um, not necessarily. I know he won't be with the A team. I expect him to be in the Gold Cup fighting for minutes. Um, but, but for what he's worth, I'm glad he's on this team um, and on this friendly. Maybe he'll get some playing time. Then we got Anthony Robinson. Um, you know, Fulham guy. I don't know where he's going to be next year. I think he's proven he can play in the Premier League. What happens to him, I have no idea. Um, maybe return to Everton. Who knows? But either way, I'm glad to see him. Glad to see him back, and I expect him to start. Then we've got a strange opportunity for DeAndre Yedlin. It's not very often a guy who's still relatively youngish with 62 caps fighting for a spot on the team. <laughs> I not I'm not sure what to make of him. Um, I do hope that he does play in some Gold Cup games so we can see if he belongs in this system or not moving forward. So there we go. Um, that's the roster. That's my reactions. Uh, comment yours. Tell me what you think of the reactions. Anybody you think, uh, I mean, my guy that we missed was Luca Della Torre. I think he deserved to be on this team. Let me know who you think deserves to be on this team. Um, Outside of that, uh, thanks for watching, subscribe, uh, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, links are going to be in the description. Have a good day guys, and we'll make another video after the game. Bye.